Sorry, I gotta pause it. I thought the music was gonna fall. <laughs> My bad, that was all on me. Throwback number two, Sarah was playing. <laughs> Anyways, my bad. Uh, I thought I had a pause, but it kept playing. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, I digress. Pull it together, will you, Tom? Uh, double two-hearted ale. I just found this in my neck of the woods. I guess they've had it for a little while, and somehow I missed it. But anyway, uh, double two-hearted. Uh, so, of, of course, the Bill's flagship double is their Hop Slam. Which is, you know, that which employs honey, but this one's a little bit of a different animal, I guess, and I'm saying that uh, out of supposition because I haven't had it yet. I haven't even checked the nose on it yet. Uh, it is. This one was packaged on 714. They say uh, uh, they give it a 90 day shelf life, so I'm, I'm certainly within that parameter as it's, you know, it's not there as I'm doing this video, but. Everything you love about our classic two-hearted ale, now in a double IPA. Yeah, with two and a half times the amount of centennial hops. So they're using centennial. So this is going to be your trendy, fruity, hop <laughs> no double. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to read the rest because, quite frankly, I just don't care. But... Um, Let's see, it says here somewhere, 11%, it is 11%, so it's a big one, it's a big double. So I believe the Hop Slams runs at 10, if I remember correctly. So you, you get a mix of, of citrus, uh, you get a mix of citrus and botanical notes on the nose, as, as you might expect, as well as big malt notes. I was talking to someone today at a beer store who said they weren't fond of it because it was too malty, but again, I mean, it is, it is a, more of a classic double, even though it is new for them, it's more of that classic style double. And again, this was from someone that thinks every double, I sh double IPA should taste like fruit. <laughs> Anyways, kids, what are you going to do? Oh, she's whiz. That's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know it seems like I, I, I kind of feel like a craft beer is, has been drawn. I mean, I don't know that it started out this way, but I, I feel like over the last two years, it's been drawn around... You know, uh, age lines. I mean, if you're over a certain age, you know, you like certain styles. You know, I mean, uh, uh, loggers, for instance. It seems like under those under 40s seem to want to, you know, make fun of those old guys, old guys like myself that like a crisp lager, all the while they're drinking their candy-ass, fruity, <laughs> slushy, whatever, uh, or, or, uh, or their, you know, seltzer concoction uh, it seems bizarre to me too but it seems to be what's going on it seems to be the same way with beers like this whereas again you've got the under 40s I think every double I IPA should be hazy and taste like some sort of fruit nonsense whereas you've got old guys like me that, that, that kind of miss them all but they want a little bit of chewy caramel and, and various things in their double uh, they like the Centennial. <laughs> we love Centennial, man. We love Amarillo. Yeah, but bring back those old school hops. Centennial, Amarillo. <laughs> I love Amarillo. Anyways, yeah. Uh, so for me, for me, uh, this, this was rather expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's 18 bucks for a six pack. That's pricey for a tight one like me. But I had to try it once. But here's the thing. Would I buy it again? Yeah, I'm not even through the first beer, but I'm going to tell you, yeah, I mean, I probably will buy it again this season, in all honesty, but I'll look through, I'll look for this every year, because this is the double IPA I'm looking for. Yeah, this is the double IPA of my dreams, yeah, I mean, a beer that tastes like a beer doesn't taste like fruit striped gum, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can dig it. <laughs> it doesn't taste like fruit stripe gum. That just came to me, believe it or not. <laughs> it just, uh, I don't even know. Yeah, there it is. Fruit stripe gum. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it doesn't taste like fruit stripe gum. Anyway, uh, anyways. 
Anyways, uh, hey man, uh, you know, the thing is, everybody ought to drink whatever the hell they like for whatever reason they like it. I, I just get frustrated with the craft beer world in general where you've got folks making fun of folks that, that love classic styles. And classic styles is, is what made craft beer. Without those classic styles, you wouldn't have those crazy ass milkshake, you know, pastry beers that are out today. They, and these are the same guys that want to. You know, talk down about classic lagers, you know. Hey, man, classic styles are what got us here. So, uh, <laughs> hey, w w without those classic craft beer styles, you'd still be drinking, you know, PBRs. So, anyway, I digress. Uh, hey, man, like what you like. I don't give a rat's ass, but, but don't, you know, don't stop me. You know, people want to say, don't stop brewers from being creative. Okay, all right, you want to make some 100 ingredient nonsense, I don't care. But don't stop brewers from being brewers either, meaning don't stop classic brewers from brewing classic styles. If your crazy ass brewer wants to chuck 100 ingredients in a beer to hide 100 flaws, hey man, no, no sweat off my balls. <laughs> But I've got a good brewer over here that knows actually how to brew a flawless pilsner. So don't stop him from doing his thing either. There you go. I am Tom the Beer Whisperer, Beer of Angels, full of a beer drinker, purveyor of wisdom, and... And cheers to this. This thing is just crazy good. I mentioned some basic flavors. I should have gone back to some of those flavors. So, in all honesty... Uh, yeah, you, you, you get a little, little bit of orange zest. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of malt. You're going to find some malt. You might want to, you might find some of those, you know, tree caramel notes that I mentioned earlier. Uh, a mix of grapefruit and orange zest and, and botanical notes in the finish. Uh, cheese biscuits and gravy. It's just a beautifully done beer. If you don't like it, well then, yeah, you probably don't like real beer. <laughs> uh, you probably weren't breastfed by your mother. I mean, I don't know. You might have, you might have psychopathic tendencies. I mean, there's probably something seriously wrong with you. You probably ought to see a shrink for that. I am Tom the Beerfus for Beer Evangelist, probably for Beer Drinker for Beer of Wisdom, man. Yeah, we're gonna probably hear about your ass on the five o'clock news one day. Uh, all around, good guy. Cheers.